Now, in this part then, we're told that the equation of tangent, the line L in other words, intersects the curve again at another point B. And our job is to find out the coordinates of that point B. So if this were the diagram, then B would be up here. And we just want need to find the coordinates then. So how do we do this? Well, if you want to find the intersection of any two graphs, okay, you need to get involved with doing simultaneous equations. So we've got the equation of the curve, the parametric equation up here, and what we'll do is we'll number the equation for x1, the equation for y2, and the line L equation 3. Now, what we do is when you're solving simultaneous equations and one's a parametric type and you've got your other as this type, what we do is we substitute for x and y into this equation. So if we do that, let's just say sub 1 and 2 into 3. Make that clear for the examiner to follow. So if we do that, what we're going to therefore have is 2 times x, which will be t cubed minus 8t. So we've got t cubed minus 8t. And then we've got minus 5y, so that would be minus 5 times y, so that would be t squared. Minus the 9 equals 0. So we just need to expand out the brackets now. So we get 2t cubed minus 16t. And then we've got minus 5t squared minus 9 equals 0. And what we can do is we've got ourselves a cubic equation here and we ought to just rearrange this, put this in descending powers. So I'll come over here now, okay, just so we have a bit more room. So therefore we're going to have 2t cubed minus 5t squared minus 16t minus 9 equals 0. Now with a cubic equation, if we need to solve it, what we need to do is factorize it. Now, with a question like this, we already know a value of t that will work for this. We've got it here. We know that t equals minus 1 is a point where the line crosses the curve. You can check it out if you don't um, believe me, but uh, there you go. t equals minus 1 should work for that. It will give you 0. And what does this mean? Well, by the factor theorem, it means that t plus 1 is a factor. I'll just remind you about that. What we've got essentially is that if I call the left-hand side a function of t, what we've got is that that function of t is equal to t plus 1 times another factor. And this factor is going to be a quadratic factor. And to find out what that quadratic factor is, you could either just do it by trial and error, or you could find that quadratic factor by dividing f of t by t plus 1. You get the factor by doing f of t divided by t plus 1. And it's that method that I'm going to use here, okay? But I'll leave it up to you to decide if you want to just do it by trial and error. So I'll put t plus 1 in here. We'll do our division sum. We've got 2t cubed minus 5t squared minus 16t minus 9. So we'll just do that. 2t cubed minus 5t squared minus 16t minus 9. So in the usual way, what do you multiply t by to give 2t cubed? And you find it's 2t squared. Multiply 2t squared with t plus 1 and you get 2t cubed plus 2t squared. We now subtract these two to find out what the remainder is. And if we do that, 2t cubed minus 2t cubed is 0. And then you've got minus 5t squared minus another plus 2t squared. So that's minus 7t squared. Bring down the next value, minus 16t, and repeat the process all over again. What do you multiply t by to get minus 7t squared? it's going to be minus 7t. So you put that up there, minus 7t. Now multiply minus 7t with the t plus 1. And you're going to get minus 7t squared 
and then minus 7t times 1 is minus 7t. Again, subtract these two values to get the remainder. Minus 7t squared minus minus 7t squared is 0. Minus 16t minus minus 7t is going to be minus 9t. Bring down the next value, minus 9. And again, what do you multiply t by to give minus 9t? And it's minus 9. Minus 9 times all of t plus 1 is minus 9t and then minus 9. Take away now to get the remainder and as expected the remainder is 0. Okay, If it wasn't 0 you know you've made a mistake through here. Okay, So this other factor, this quadratic factor, the question mark here is going to be 2t squared minus 7t minus 9. So what that means is that if we were to factorise this we've got t plus 1 is a factor and the quadratic factor is the 2t squared minus 7t minus 9 okay and that equals 0. So therefore we can actually factorise this quadratic factor again and we've got t plus 1 here and if we split that up into two linear factors it's going to be 2t and a t and you'll have a minus 9 and a plus 1. If you expand that you'll get 2t squared minus 7t minus 9. So what does this mean? Well we've got a couple of t plus 1's here so therefore we either have t plus 1 equaling 0 or this other factor 2t minus 9 equaling 0. Well this one leads to t equaling minus 1 or in this case if we add 9 and divide by 2 we end up with t equaling 9 over 2. Now we know that t equals minus 1 was the value at a. The value at b must be when t is equal to 9 over 2. So all we need to do is substitute 9 over 2 into here for x and into here for y. And I'll leave it up to you to do that, okay? But you should be able to say that, uh, therefore, um, let's just say at b, okay? At b, t equals 9 over 2, and therefore b has coordinates. And if you substitute, as I say, 9 over 2 into here, check it out on your calculator, you should find you get 441 over 8 okay and if you put 9 over 2 into here and square it you'll find you get 81 over 4. So there you go they are the coordinates of the point B. Well, that brings us now to the end of this question.